tribute. Here's another day. We go tomorrow. Oh, what? What are you doing here? I mean, I'm just packing up because haven't you heard? I'm cancelled. Again. Yeah, apparently I hate Aboriginals this time. Well, news to me. In case you haven't heard, there is a clip of me circulating the internet making culturally insensitive remarks, and yes, they were culturally insensitive, and I am sorry that I said that. Originally, I wasn't. When I saw the usual blue checks on Twitter going rabbit, I was thinking, yes, I made their day worse. But then my booking manager told me of a very reasonably worded message from an indigenous fan of mine who lives in the region, and I won't name you because I don't know if you want to be named or not, but thank you for writing. He basically said, hey man, I know you didn't mean for what you said to come out the way it did, and I know comedians push the boundaries for a living, and I fully understand that you're sick of SJWs trying to language police you. I'm still a massive fan no matter what, but I'm not gonna lie, when we heard those comments, me and my friends were pretty bummed because it's just been such a tough issue to deal with around here. <sighs> I'm sorry. And I know that that insatiable gaggle of TikTok humdrums, no matter what I say, will chime in with THAT APOLLY WITH FAITH! FAITH APOLLY! F*** off and watch the feed. Mate, this one's for you and the rest of your community. Sorry. Honestly, didn't mean to cause offence. I completely agree that the way the point came across was insensitive, and I'll explain in depth what I actually meant, but because this has blown up and the press is now involved, the truth is intertwined with a lot of mistruths, and so you have to address them, otherwise they fester like a poison gun effect in a video game. And to begin with, we'll be drudging through journalist Marion Bilton Goff's piece in Bragg. Yeah, she wouldn't drink Clementine Ford's piss if she was given half the chance. You just know that's where she learned about this controversy. That oh-so-infallible community of morally superior beings who rally under the banner, kill all men. Always good to be lectured about indigenous insensitivity by a group of people who want half the indigenous population dead. Serious journalist that she is, she read a tweet, which I'm not even being facetious when I say that, that appears to be a masters of journalism in 2020. From the judges community manager quits to the YouTube is ongoing controversy. And look, while I could say a lot about that out of gratitude for what Podcast Matt has done over the years, I'm going to hold my tongue and wish him all the best for the future. It then goes on to say, The community manager this producer of Friendly Judges has quit following yet another racist rant from the popular YouTuber. I know from a wealth of experience that you can't reason with people who use words like bad take, yikes, problematic, disappointed, double down, gronk, do better, big, insert energy. It's on my quick list of, oh, they're an imbecile. But let's look at the charges Mephisto from the Adams family here are leveling as racist. The giant snake sucks, it's called a carpet python. I was referring to the rainbow snake. Naturally, being a journalist from Bragg, which keep in mind is just one letter away from Rag, she deliberately left out the next sentence. I'm sorry, I'm sick of this shit of everyone just being like, well, the rainbow serpent is a thing, so that's what happened in Australia, right? No! No, there was giant kangaroos and marsupial lions. Like, that existed, and we should just be celebrating the fact that those fossils exist. Which, sure, flippant remark. Did you know I'm a comedian? Probably not, seeing as you can tell she's never laughed at anything in her life except maybe black books. My point, that I very inarticulately expressed, was that the indigenous population have been around since the time of marsupial lions, surviving massive climate swings, and living with actual giant animals, which yes, very racist sentiment I know to point out that the facts are clearly more impressive than legend to me. Probably not to her, because what's the better entire bookshelf is nothing but Harry Potter, Jane Austen, Handmaid's Tale, and of course the lesser known fictional works like Fight Like a Girl. This doesn't stop the controversial comedian from continuing his insensitive line of commentary, adding more remarks about genocide, which he says while doing air quotes, and ending with science counts for everything. Interesting. Why does she just infer that point and not include the quote? Let's roll the footage. We get it. As, as part of science, I'm not on that Andrew Bolt train of there wasn't a genocide that was enacted on the indigenous people. Yeah, obviously there was. But like, dude, science counts for everything. The air quotes were around Bolt's argument, you dishonest pus. Which, to be fair to Bolt, was actually Keith Windshuttle who argued that there wasn't a Tasmanian genocide. Bolt argued that there wasn't a stolen generation. Clearly, from my inverted commas around the argument, I don't agree. But why am I correcting that? Because I don't care what the facts are. I care about the facts. Unlike Marriott. The 31-year-old, hey! I'm not 31, forever 17, has posted multiple homophobic tweets and other racist remarks in the past. 
Not giving a single example of what she means by homophobic. So here we are again. We're just supposed to trust that this mendacious idiot is automatically correct on a nebulous term, particularly when she links my other racist comments to an article of John Barillaro accusing me of racism where the journalist was clearly siding with me as the article reads very, very differently to this one. And guess where that article was published? Brag, Marriott, sweetie, to use words you're clearly familiar with, Yikes. You better whip up an article quick smart about how racist your employer is for making dog whistles, am I right? After all, those that defect from races should be commended. That's the line of logic in this article, isn't it? Cancel yourself, c If you don't see the moral imperative to resign, and I have a sneaking suspicion that someone with such obvious surpluses of self-esteem as yourself won't, brag, fire her ass. Not because she's mean to me, because she's really shit at her job. Now, walking over to Pedestrian, who you really should pay as consultants on how to have even less ethics because they're a little smarter than you, they didn't publish the journalist's name. So instead, I'm just gonna introduce you to the current and former heads of Pedestrian, Matt Rowley, Chris Varishna, and Oscar Martin. Hi guys, remember the good old days where we used to have parties together, including that racist Australia Day party you hosted? Ooh, hashtag awkward. I didn't attend it, not out of protest, but just after going to two parties with these guys, I thought, holy shit, you are the worst people I have ever met in my life. The most vacuous, exploitative, money-hungry filth I've ever met. Slow learner I know. Probably should have gathered that from the ever-present new male face he pulls in every photo he ever takes. But as they correctly point out, the most offensive things I said were, if that tree is below the threshold of when indigenous people were saying it's a sacred tree, no, science is science. If that tree was not there before colonialism, it's a tree, a tree. This is the point that pissed me off on Twitter. They were saying that it is comparable to Queensland. Notice anything about those comments? That they're offensive, yes. And again, to the guy that wrote to me, you and your community, I wanna make clear, if there's a silver lining to all of this, it's that I made the readers of Pedestrian's Day worse, but I'm saddened to hear that it made you and your mates day worse. I owe you an apology. I'm sorry those comments caused offense. It wasn't my intention. I really do mean it. It wasn't my intention, because the second thing I want you to notice about those quotes is how they don't even make sense. And the reason? I was really, really hammered. We just came off filming another booze review, and because we were already wasted, we thought, yeah, doing a political podcast live, piece of cake, can't drive, but I can barely talk. To which I know the splendor crowd, infallible beings that they are, <laughs> they will say, that's no excuse. Oh, is it not? Okay, you drink 30 shots of cheap soju, get on Twitch, and let me ask you about the most hot button issues in the country. I'm sure you'll pass with flying colours in the criteria of articulation and delicacy. To which you'll say, what, it's just cool to kill someone in a car crash because you're drunk? Well, no, I'm a f***ing idiot just like someone who does drink and drive. But even in the law, it's a mitigating factor. Alcohol, and I know this will shock you, impedes your judgement. And a lot of alcohol impedes your judgement a lot. So much so that I was explicitly told not to talk about the tree. That's why my audience was goading me into it, which guys, thanks for listening. But can you stop trying to cancel me for a meme? Seriously though, if it ever does come to that, just justify it to me as dude for the meme. At which point I will duly take my karmatic position as a bricky, heading off to Toowoomba saying as I leave, fair, fair. Anyway, at the very end of the podcast, when I was at my most wasted, I got the question and thought, yeah, I'm in the best state ever to answer this question. I thought I was doing an awesome job, listened back to it and realized I was basically Jesse from Breaking Bad yelling over and over, yeah, science bitch. So once again, sorry, shouldn't have gone on drunk. If there's one thing I've learned from this whole ordeal, it's a drinking on a podcast, leave that to the experts. Let's point out something about cancel culture. At first, the feedback was, hey, those comments were insensitive, granted. Then it quickly escalated to culturally insensitive, okay. Then it went to racist. Well, you can accuse a f***ing lamppost of being racist. So just like said lamppost, really shined a light on this one. And then it gets to the point that pedestrian is accusing you of defending cultural genocide. Pedestrian. The company bankrolled by the Commonwealth Bank and other major banks that to this day are funding land grabs in Southeast Asia, wiping out some of the last habitat of orangutans and tricking their audience into funding it. You've earned the right to cast a stone, have you? You gaggle of the most vacuous, fearful hipsters I've ever met in my life. And I've met a lot of fearful hipsters. I used to go to Newtown. But here's a news flash for you guys. Your paycheck comes from killing indigenous people. You know it. 
I've pointed it out numerous times, you still work there, and yet you're going to accuse others of defending cultural genocide, whatever the f*** that means? Well, I appeal to the court of public opinion. I stand accused of saying insensitive comments about a debatably sacred tree, even within the affected Indigenous communities themselves. That, apparently, is defending cultural genocide. Your crimes, Chris Warishner, Oscar Martin and Matt Rowley, are literally aiding and abetting crimes against humanity. Fact. Why? Why do it? The 25 million that you pair of convictionless suckholes got for selling your soul to Channel 9 was not enough to live on. That's not 25 million divided, by the way. That's 25 million each. In your decade and a half stewardship of the worst publication in the country, you couldn't afford to give me Bank and Bank Australia a shout out once. Doesn't cost a dime. Could have had a much bigger impact than your f***ing sustainable homes business you started up to, I guess, alleviate some of the guilt you have without actually doing any charity. I'll do it for free though, Oscar, you knob. You ready? Switch over to Bank Australia or me, Bank, if you're not vibing killing Indigenous people like Chris Warishna, Oscar Martin and Matt Rowley clearly are. This is the difference between me and the Three Stooges. You can count on me to stick up for what's right. You cannot count on me to do it respectfully. I'm an internet hybrid of a shock jock comedian and political commentator, and yet you expect me to be nice? Suffocate on a mouthful of cocks. The guy that snuck into John Barillaro's house and f***ed in it is supposed to be the bastion of politeness, is he? I've garnered this audience through humour. A big element of humour is shock value. I then use those eyeballs to focus them on doing good things. These two pricks got rich off of writing a hell of a lot of shit articles that say, oh my god, homophobia, racism, yikes, and focus them on stealing land off some of the poorest people on earth. Despite this, Matt f***ing Rowley will sit there and allow me to be accused of hatred towards Indigenous communities. Me. The guy that has done videos and podcasts outlining Rio Tinto destroying one of the oldest Indigenous sites in the country. If I was pro-cultural genocide, don't you think I'd be pretty pro-blowing that up? Look at pedestrians' hot take on that issue. Oh, they took pains to emphasise that Rio Tinto is very sorry about it and looking into how they can improve in the future. Well. Looks like you can count on them for sticking up for what's wrong, respectfully. The guy that's discussed at length the need for constitutional recognition on podcasts, which, gee, I wonder why the AUWU never takes those comments out of context. Yeah, don't know about that. You know why you even know about this 30 second clip that was only ever supposed to be aired to about 700 people in the first place? Well, it's because the AUWU, remember them? Here's a little refresher of that nice little mob of people. Thomas Students, Alex North, Owen Bennett, Jeremy Poxon. Hi guys. Need another video done on you, do you? We've got more than enough material. They're little cronies, from what we can gather, sit there watching a podcast they hate. Wow, what great lives they must lead. And you could join the club. Looking for little 10 second, 30 second clips of a podcast that they can clip to generate attack headlines, which go watch my video on the AUWU. These are evil, evil people responsible for destroying lives, almost definitely literally in relation to a man that was begging them for help over and over that was ignored until he ended his life. And yet pedestrian use them all the time as a source. We even pointed that out to you. No acknowledgement of it, still. Still use their stuff. Another tidbit of information we discovered is that the AUWU, the same corporation that claims it brought about investigations into robo debt, which is a complete f***ing lie, a good indicator of that being, really, really looks like one of the major sponsors of the AUWU is Panthera, a $22,000 donation. Panthera is the company primarily profiting from the robo-debt scheme who the ACCC says unduly harasses customers. Well, no wonder they want to donate to the AUWU then, big fans of their work. You think Pedestrian is going to write an article on that? Then again, seeing as they're cool with their sponsors killing Indigenous people in Southeast Asia, them being cool with robo-debt companies apparently sponsoring supposed unemployment unions would be a massive step up in morality. I've talked about the Liberals' cuts and privatisations to Indigenous services in remote areas. Has pedestrian? No, not once. Gee, sure that has nothing to do with the fact that they're owned by a board with Peter Costello sitting on it. I've pointed out one of the leaders of an investigation into an in-death custody of an Indigenous man that really, really looked like a murder ended up being appointed by Gladys Berejiklian to be the New South Wales Ombudsman, meaning he's in charge of looking into if there was any governmental misconduct. Yeah, 
The reason I do those videos is because I hate Aboriginals. I'll give you this though, I didn't do those videos because they're Aboriginal. The reason I don't like the fact that Rio Tinto left a uranium mine in the top end abandoned and have no intention of treating it, it's because I don't like the idea of little kids, regardless of their f***ing race, playing in uranium contaminated mud puddles. And that issue just so happens to disproportionately affect indigenous communities. Pedestrian, judging from their coverage, seems to think that Rio Tinto f***ing off is as lit as said puddles. The reason I care is because they're human beings. It's the same reason I wanted the tree removed, and it's because personally, I know that everybody has different values and I can respect that, but I value human lives over culture. Very controversial opinion, I know. In fact, it's so controversial, it's the opinion of the Victorian Aboriginal Heritage Council, stating that the disruption on the works is a concern for our community, both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal. Why are they saying that? The tree I was talking about was near a highway that has had 11 deaths on it and 100 accidents. The highway needs to be improved to stop human deaths. To which I know that the response will be, yeah, but the indigenous people around the area didn't agree with it. Yep, just like the people in Victoria didn't agree with the opinion of the rest of Australia in the last federal election. But it's called living in a democracy. The majority of the indigenous traditional owners did. Chair of Eastern Ma Aboriginal Corporation, quote, but it does mean that when the cultural authority mandated by self-determining family elected representatives decide that we listen, to not breaks the very fabric of our societal values and principles and the vision and dreams of our Eastern Ma elders. But it's fine, hipsters, I get it. It's the same logic you pull read the Australia Day debate, that if the indigenous population agree with me, they're right, but if they don't, they secretly agree with me anyway, they're just being oppressed by the white man. Always cobbling together this argument that the Eastern Ma Aboriginal Corporation and the Victorian Aboriginal Heritage Council are somehow bought and rubber stamping the wishes of the Victorian government. Well, how very odd for a rubber stamp institution to negotiate with the government to change the route to save over a dozen sacred trees while the final tree getting chopped down, it's very debatable as to whether it even is sacred, as, sorry to trigger you guys, but SCIENCE BITCH! And local elders both looked at it and said it's nowhere near as old as the claims and the markings of a sacred tree aren't there and the people that are claiming they are there are always proposing as the solution to human deaths this magical alternative northern route. You'll hear about it all the time in the press. What you'll seldom hear them ever report on is the current route will cut down 3,000 trees and one allegedly sacred tree, while the alternative route will cut down 8,000 trees and includes many, many more allegedly sacred trees. On top of that, this northern route doesn't pass safety requirements. So yeah, it is technically an alternative route, but talk about missing the forest for the trees. Even if everything I said was a lie, and it's not, I'm not the AUWU, that route has not met a democratic consensus amongst the local population. If you agree to it, you've probably agreed to years more infighting about what trees are and aren't sacred, more lawsuits, more community meetings, more protests, while more people get mangled and die on the highway. Now why was I so angry about that on the pod? Well first off, because I was basically at that stage of England's greatest Prime Minister was Lord Palmerston! Hit the elder. Lord Palmerston! Hit the elder! You know what? That scene pretty much encapsulates my entire podcast. Bishar al Assad! Xi Jinping! Ask yourself why this local issue has been dragged to national attention. You certainly don't get the same scrutiny and emphasis on differing opinions about Gladys Berejiklian's environmental record. We're doing a video on this, but the gatekeeper himself, ballsy motherfucker, rocked up to a conference of hers and asked her point blank about her land clearing record. You know what happened next? He was escorted out and written up in the press for, oh, how could he refer to her as Miss McGuire? I'll tell you how, because it's fucking funny. Any coverage of him pointing out that Gladys Berejiklian is responsible for a higher land clearing rate than Brazil? Crickets. Or well, there would be if there were any trees left. But they care so much about the environmental and cultural impact of a road upgrade. Nine Fairfax slamming Daniel Andrews day in, day out for being culturally insensitive and environmentally destructive. Yeah, the guy who's trying to hammer out a treaty with the indigenous population and banned old growth logging and is phasing out native logging, while the Murdoch press consistently runs on the dictator Dan angle. It's almost as if it's being used as a wedge issue which was in reference to my blurted out remarks, re-Queensland. Don't agree? That's fine. Because I don't try to cancel people based off the words they use. And I especially don't go after the people who are associated with them. You can attack me all you like. 
I put my hand up for a life of controversy. I'm very used to the slings and arrows of public life. You know who's not in the public's eye? My girlfriend. She's been copying it from exclusively nasty, nasty women. You're judging from what obvious bimbos they are, I'll bet my life savings they all came from professional dumb f Abby Chatfield's Instagram, as you would have to be a basic bitch to care about whatever the f that walking billboard thinks, demanding that she break up with me and shaming her for even daring to date me in the first place. I'd ask my audience not to do that to your long-term partner, Abby, but you can't land one long enough. So instead I'll extend the courtesy to you even though you deserve nothing but utter contempt. Don't attack her, she clearly won't learn anything. My booking manager, who is indisputably the sweetest person I know, the real life Marge Simpson is getting a constant stream of abuse about what a terrible person she is. Yes, the woman who used to counsel kids from broken homes for a living clearly deserves it. Warwick from Lonely Kids Club, Message after message like this, demanding that he cut all ties with me or they'll ruin his business. I lifted this one from his page. Just one of the many comments and DMs which, mate, you better thank your lucky stars, Warwick begged me to black out your name. He pleaded with me not to say anything about you or him, being a smaller man than he is. A man who I know for a fact has been in debt in the past and yet still continued to raise along with me tens of thousands of dollars for native wildlife starving from the bushfires. Yet yeah, you've earned the right to pass moral judgement on him, have you? For what? The virtue of having such a fucked attention span that you can glean a pedestrian headline? Can everyone who's not some self-absorbed TikTok addict do some Christmas shopping with Lonely Kids Club just to show him that you think raising tens of thousands of dollars for charity even when he's losing money perhaps, maybe, just maybe, outweighs being my friend? Furthermore, do you think these people agree with me on this issue? Every time I've had one of my patented verbal diarrhea incidents, who do you think are the first people on my case? The people you're f***ing doxing. This brings me to one of the central ringleaders of this entire carnival, Nick Ritchie. After obsessively TikToking on the subject, which Jesus, you think my drunken ramblings are stupid, this dimwit's sober and the best argument he can garner appears to be raising his eyebrows. The giant snake sucks! It's called a fucking carpet python, dude! You know what'd be funny? I mean, absolutely hilarious. The 3,695 people stopped supporting Friendly Geordies on Patreon. But here at Out, let's make it even more funny. What if those 3,695 people supported an Indigenous Australian on Patreon instead? Now that would be funny. That'd be a great way to show that you don't support Friendly Geordies comments at all. And it might be the only way to get even a hint of an apology out of him. Or even acknowledgement or explanation. Well, now that I already have, Fairly thoroughly, mind you. I'll personally address you, Nick. You're a nitwit. Fast forward past Oh my god, racism right against indigenous people. No, just you. There's a lot of indigenous Australians I greatly admire and have talked about them on previous podcasts and videos like Leanne Enoch, Pat Dodson. Very odd the AUW never clips those shout outs, but I really like Ruby Hamad's new book as well. And you know why? Because she's actually a journalist. Unlike this self worshipping dullard who claims he's a journalist, which from what I can gather appears to be him making TikTok rants that make even less sense than when I'm drunk, and commissioning f***ing furry artwork of himself. You're just jealous. <laughs> In response to his call to leave my Patreon, do it! Do it at any time! The choice is yours and I thank you for the support in the past. I'd appreciate it more if you signed up. I'm just saying you can leave an organisation that has broken huge corruption stories, fractured a coalition government, started a grassroots campaigning organisation aimed at unseating liberals, switched tens of thousands of people over to environmentally responsible banks, super funds and search engines that plant trees, raised nearly half a billion dollars for native wildlife, when none of us even have a single asset to our names, which I've got to give credit to my booking manager for that Herculean effort. You know, the one currently getting incessantly abused online, not trying to guilt you, but if you want to leave me, go support Indigenous people, that's fine, but go and leave to support an organisation that actually supports Indigenous people. Organisations that prevent kids in remote communities going deaf, perhaps. Maybe that's a better investment than giving it to this smug, vapid waste of space that uses the money to get drawings of himself as a wolf with his cock out, drinking his own cum. Let's make it even more funny. Oh yeah, I am kink shaving you, dick. That's f but the same rule applies, don't attack him. You really don't want to be associated with that. But to the guy from the start of the video who wrote that to me though, sincerely, and I do mean this, thank you. You made me see that my words were upsetting more people than Clementine Ford's audience. And I do apologize once again that my drunken comments caused offense to the local indigenous population in your area. Having said that though, come on, 
pretty good we pissed off Abby Chatfield. Also, I have to apologize to my wider audience that I keep putting off the Sydney Morning Herald video, but don't worry, it is coming. Like this video if you believe me this time. And do the AUW shit social influencers and click sites that keep getting me distracted to quote Tito, stop sending people to cancel me. We've already canceled five of them. If you don't stop trying to cancel me, I'll cancel you and I won't have to try twice. Subscribe. Please share and comment below. Come in.